Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, more importantly, gamers all around the world, welcome back to another episode of BA Select Start. Base. We are back here again with another episode, and I think it's fair to say, Dan, with this uh, video game title, I don't think there is an ending to this, because I feel like the last episode that we did was supposed to be the final nail in the coffin, but here we are, we find ourselves back talking about this particular game again. Well, maybe this one will be the last of us talking about this game. Hopefully we don't get left behind. So, <laughs> we are back here again, like I said, yes, we are once again talking about Last of Us Part 2, and I think to a certain extent, rightfully so, because I mean, it's, it's been a total 10 days since the game came out, so it's still relatively fresh to talk about. And what we want to do today is we kind of want to spitball. Uh, I brought it up to Dan and I said, what do you think about doing an episode where essentially we kind of give our own pitch of what we would do with The Last of Us Part 2? Let's just say if it hadn't been released yet, it was still in early development, and we were offered our two cents of what we would do with these characters and where we would take them and what the adventure would hold. So... Here today, we are here to talk about, personally, uh, respectively, Dan, what, what you would implement, what kind of a story you would implement, and what kind of a story I would implement. All right, so first of all, like, like I've said, I've, I've been advocating for this game to not get quite as much flack as uh, some people have given it. I know a lot of YouTubers, I sent you a video earlier, and it was uh, reaction videos to... Uh, the frequency with which we were playing as Abby, and everybody was like, no, I hate her. I hate her. She, yeah. she deserves everything. The number of times in that video that I sent you alone that people were like, I, can I just climb up a high cliff and have her jump off? Because I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Um, <laughs> so I'm sure they were thrilled when they got to the end and, and they, were, they were able to make her eat a machete. But um, Or fall off that uh, bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but so the, the, basically I, we, I, we've talked about this at this point and we've both acknowledged that there, there's certain elements within the game, uh, which will also come into play in our fantasy bookings that worked. There are yes. certain elements that were, that were really, really nice. Yeah. And so I think there's a possibility that you could just rearrange a couple of things in the actual game. And people would cling to it a little bit better. More acceptance. Yeah. And I know I threw this out during our last one, but I, I, I want to just kind of shave it down because now it's an isolated spotlight for this. Um, my thought process is that the first thing I think would that I think would fix this is the chief complaint is that you start as Ellie and then you abruptly meet it. Abby, and then you go forward a little bit, uh, she gets saved, and then shit hits the fan. Yeah. And I think that if you start the game as Abby, people will, they'll be a little jarred at first. They'll be like, well, who the hell is this? Yeah. But that will also leave them open because they don't have these preconceived notions of, God damn, she just killed Joel. Yeah. Um, and you start the game in the Abbey flashback four years earlier where she's looking for her dad and they saved the zebra. And um, you go through that part portion, which then gives you that kind of dynamic. Yeah. And then you could jump forward. I'm hesitant to jump forward too many times because I, I feel like you should play through a little bit of the, of the Abbey stuff first. Yeah. And get through that four years earlier and possibly even go through to the part where she finds her dad in the operating in the operating room. Yeah, before you move forward, I was just going to say that I think you can have that in there. But I just think that some of the sections could be trimmed down or could be used as cutscenes as opposed to you jogging through the woods trying to find the dad or 
you know, yeah. everything else in between. Well, and, and some of that was definitely implemented just to be gameplay, like yeah. to give the the player more time to be to, as they say, be on the stick. Yeah. Um. So I mean, yeah, you could truncate that a little bit, and then if you like, I could say I, I would say you could even not include the section where her dad is talking to Marlene until a flashback later in the game. Right. Yeah. But if you do. The scene in the uh, out in the woods, and then you go to the part where she finds her dad in the operating room. Then I think that's enough backstory. Yeah. And you go, oh, oh no. And then you cut forward to where we actually start the game with Ellie. And you pl- I, I, honestly, I think that might be the primary change. Because then that takes a chunk from that middle section that people hated playing as her for so long, moves it to the start, and then you get some some empathetic backstory before we meet her. But when you see her at the lodge with Owen, then you're already aware of why they're hunting down Joel. Yeah. And again, I, 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 I mentioned this last time, I don't know if Ellie ever actually learns that it was... Be- that Abby hunted him down because her dad was killed. Yeah, I don't, I don't think... I don't, I don't think, think that exchange ever happens. Yeah, I don't think that ever reached her. Um, but, so, yeah, you you get through to where Joel, Joel dies, and then you play through the rest of the game. And uh, I'll, I'll, I, I think at that point, honestly, just about everything is fine otherwise. Maybe change the performance of Abby a little bit. I know the other com- chief complaint is she doesn't seem to show any empathy. Yeah. Um, so if you could modify some of the dialogue a little bit, that'd be that that I think would carry a, a lot of weight. And then you get to the end where I I know I saw uh, what's her name Alana Alana Pierce, who's one of the YouTubers, and she I got to the end and she goes I think that should have been a choice. Now I know I mentioned that I thought the choice should happen at the theater to lead you toward one of two endings. And she, she thought that killing Abby in the, in the water should have been where you make a choice. Right. And I think either one would have been better. And I don't think you necessarily have to change anything. Ending wise. You just essentially steer off toward one, or you go to the other. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. I, I think it's a little, a little late in the game if you do it where she has to choose whether or not she kills Abby. <laughs> but yeah. uh, your ending, you're, well, your ending, no, because it's it's really just do you choose to kill Abby or do you choose not to? But everything else is going to play out the same way. She's already left Dina. Yeah. Uh, she already had the fingers bitten off in that moment. Um, so that would have really just been a moral moral decision for the player to make. The, the, the one thing, though, that I could see being a different outcome is I know that with how things are right now, you said that Tommy would not accept her back because... She literally traveled all that way, killed all those people, and then when it came time to pull the trigger, she backed out. But I think yeah. that if you make the decision to kill Abby, that that might slightly change the ending, where you maybe see a small cutscene between Tommy and Ellie, where it's like, okay, Tommy, yeah, maybe I where did she, it. She, where she can go, she can justify going back to Jackson, and even if she and Dina uh, can't get picked, like even if Dina's unwilling to get back together. Yeah, she at least has Tommy. Yeah. But then it's, like, the whole thing's still tragic because then it's just her and Tommy because I know Maria separated from him. (laughs) Is that what... Oh, yeah, no, that's right. He said we're taking a break right now. That's right. So, I mean, it's really just... The the terrible thing about it is that it it highlights how how revenge will eat away at you and it'll ultimately destroy you. Yeah. Because his his desire for revenge led led him to getting shot in the leg with an arrow and shot in the head, and then it cost him his marriage because he still couldn't give up on it even after they lost. <laughs> right. Yeah. the The one thing though that I would suggest in all of that is 
I know you're talking about like recutting, but I would also say try to implement some cutting because like, I mean, I, it's like beating a dead horse at this point, but that Abby part is just so long. It's so extensive that it takes up so much of the game. Well, yeah. And then, like, I, yeah, there's still sections of that that you could probably, you could definitely trim down. Like instead of popping out of a building and saying, oh yeah, we're heading for that three times, do it, do it twice. Yeah. And that that's going to cut out half an hour of play. Um, but also, if you take the, those scenes I mentioned before and put them at the beginning, then that se- middle section isn't going to be as tedious. Right, yeah. But that's 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 it. That's pretty much my thing, is take a couple scenes, put them at the start, give the backstory to Abby at the very beginning of the game. And then people might actually empathize with her by the time we meet her. And while they'll still be pissed that she that she offs Joel the way that she does, then they'll at least already have that understanding of why she's doing what she's doing instead of going, she killed him. Oh, now you want me? Now you want me to? F-? It's it's the 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 problem is the retroactive attempt. Yeah. And like I that that's my opinion though. That's all I got on the recut. So now we can dive into into our brand new original content. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to warn you, it's not going to be too original because we mentioned this, that we're going to be borrowing some aspects from the second game that I thought yeah. were actually, it, it was actually like very good to have in the narrative because it, it makes sense. Yeah, Mine, mine's going to start because I, I tried to, I, I kind of started writing a spec sequel before they ever announced any like after, I think it was after they did the first teaser where she plays the guitar in the in the house. Yeah. Um, and so I'm borrowing a little bit from that, and then kind of blending it together with this game. So there's certain elements of me, and then certain elements of what we already got. So whenever you are ready, go ahead and dive on in. The first thing that I want to throw out there is that my intention is to have the story fill in the gap, the seven year gap that we experienced with Joel and Ellie. Um. I want the game to, one, fill in that gap, and two, sort of bring everybody up to speed of where these characters are in present day. So, with that said, I was thinking that uh, the story starts off much like how sort of the second second part starts off. Um, Story starts with Ellie and Joel and Jackson living in a community that has, to some extent, restored some peace. However, Joel and Ellie are not on good terms. From the ending of the first game to now, Ellie has grown more and more suspicious about if Joel has told the truth. This has led to them only saying hi and bye to one another on a daily basis. Joel is the one who is willing to talk things out, but but Ellie is having none of it. She doesn't talk to Joel, but carries around the attitude of, I can treat you however I want. Two, but if anyone harms a hair on your head, I will have none of it. So while there is a little bit of resentment of like, I'm suspicious, I don't really want to talk to you because we talked about this before. Ellie has a very good BS detector where she can tell if you're trying to just quickly, you know, make up a lie and trying to cover something up. So with that, um, there comes to a plot point where Ellie and Joel head uh, to the outskirts um of their base to check for infected. As in, Joel is checking one area, Ellie is checking a completely different area, so they're not together. Um, Ellie, alongside Dina, verifies her area and comes back stating that all infected have been taken care of. She then learns that Joel has run into trouble while clearing out infected. She learns he is held in captivity. She gears up and prepares to search for Joel, Dina insists on helping Ellie, but Ellie refuses, stating that she doesn't want Dina in harm's way. Ellie heads to the last place where Joel was seen. Uh, she then finds her way to the base of, uh, of the capturers. Fighting and killing her way through, she eventually finds Joel. Tied to a chair, wounded, tortured, and bleeding out immensely. From this point, uh, we get a few flashbacks um, that... Um, sort of give an insight as to how Ellie and Joel's relationship has shifted from the ending of the first game to now. How uh, they were a little bit more talkative when the events of the first game happened, but then as time has sort of gone on, 
Ellie became talking, she would talk less to Joel and wouldn't really interact with him and would kind of give him a, uh, a cold shoulder, essentially. Um, let's see. So the flashbacks would show how the relationship has deteriorated through the years. Uh, we, then, we then cut back to the present where Tommy is talking to Ellie, informing her that Joel is under care and is quote-unquote still breathing for now. Ellie eventually gets persuaded to have Tommy and Dina help her bring those responsible to justice. Ellie runs into the leader of the clan and learns that Joel uh, was held captive and tortured because of his selfish decision to risk the health of mankind. So essentially, it's, it's a clan who learned that he was responsible for there essentially not being a cure or a vaccine. Now, would you have it be a sect of fireflies, kind of like the like the WLF? I was thinking you can go in any direction you want with this. You can have it be um, either someone resembling the Scars or the WLF or a group who's trying to reform the fireflies. You can insert any type of group you want there. The, the Neo Fireflies. The Neophytes. Um... I think that's actually a word, so... Yeah, yeah, neo, neophyte is for someone who's new to an activity. I was, I was just gluing what you had said together. But anyway, um, so my last point here is that after a climactic battle, Ellie subdues, um, Ellie subdues her enemies with the help of Tommy and Dina. Uh, we then cut to a moment where Ellie talks to Joel while he is still under care. When left alone, they talk, and Ellie informs Joel she's sorry for giving him the silent treatment, and she will make an attempt to move forward from what has happened. So essentially taking that entire dialogue sequence of, um, I, I, I forget what, I'm trying to paraphrase, but she said, I don't think I can ever forgive you, but I'd like to try. But I'd like to try, exactly. Um, and that's... So I'm insinuating two things here. I'm trying to give the player a gray area where, number one, you're going to have to... Um, guess for yourself if Joel survives because he's under care, but there's no telling which way it's going to go. Um, and two, uh, where this is going to take Ellie and Joel's relationship from here on in. She wants she wants to um forgive him, but sort of she sort of juggles with it sometimes. Oh, but he still lied to me. My life could have meant something. He was being selfish. He didn't tell me the truth. I was supposed to be a daughter to him. You know that type of a thing. So that's that's it. That's what I got. Not the most um in-depth story, but I just figured you could take this as the wink wink the base and just sort of build on it. Um because again, someone I don't know if it was you or who said it, but Last of Us at its core is Joel and Ellie. And I felt like in the first game we experienced sort of Joel's journey where if Ellie was ever in trouble, Joel was the one who was, you know, going after her. Now in this one, I, I would try to put the shoe on the other foot and be like, well, Ellie has this resentment. And again, it's that mentality of I'll treat you however I want. But if anybody harms a hair on your head, I will practically kill them. Um, and so in this one, it's when Joel runs into trouble you know, where, where does Ellie's loyalty lie, you know, which she goes after him and finds him just in time. But then again, you're going to have to, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a toss up of, does he survive? Does he die? And it kind of leaves that gray area. So that's what I got. Gotcha. But well, I wouldn't, are you, are you saying you would leave the, the game? Can you could conclude the game without knowing if Joel's alive? Uh, not knowing if Joel is going to make it or if he's basically, you know, uh, if his days are numbered or if he makes a full recovery. But let me just throw in saying that I do not have any intentions of doing a Last of Us 3 where you get the answer to that question. I just feel like the first game did such a good job of leaving you with questions. So it's like now I want to leave the player with, with, with those with different questions, not a definite fairy tale ending where Joel survives and everybody goes back to living their life unscathed and Ellie forgives Joel and sunshine and rainbow type of thing. So I I I don't like the idea of it being like an off screen thing. I wouldn't be a, adverse to that being the conclusion if it was a little cliche a little cliched where he's like 
he's out. He's unconscious. He, he we, again, we don't know if he's going to make it, but she goes and she's at his bedside. Yeah. And you have some sort of like dialogue and you can either do that like close up little hand twitch thing or, or not Yeah. where she's just holding his hand and that then it, and then it kind of, you hear the noodling of the guitar and then it goes to the credits. Cause I, I, do, I, I, I know as a player, I would hate it if they were just like, Hey, by the way, who knows what happens to Joel? And we know, like, we don't see him again. We don't, <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I would want to see him. Now, the thing that I'll say about the, the actual game is the game is still about Ellie and Joel at its core because her entire motivating force for the entire game is Joel. Yeah. So we have to keep, we have to, we do have to take that into account. However, um, the, the, I, I just want to t- touch on this real quick. The thing that I am coming around to not be uh, thrilled with is the fact that Naughty Dog did that that bait and switch false marketing stuff. Yeah, I get that you don't want to disclose plot details, but and like I, I saw one where Neil steered into into it and was like, "Yeah, and we, all we did was this." Yeah, but it pissed people off, dude. <laughs> you reskinned, um, you reskinned Jesse and had Troy come in and say the line to hide the fact that. That wasn't what happened. Yeah, uh, I I think in mi- in the midst of gameplay, I told you I consider that to be a low blow, a below the yeah. belt uh, tactic. I, I would have preferred that they just be entirely honest with us in terms of their plot and their their marketing. Yeah. What I what I, another thing that I think would have made made the game better for me personally. I know we've talked about the idea of of Ghost Joel. <laughs> Yeah. Um, if she was having these sort sort like if she's already got the the PTSD thing going on, who's to say that she? I mean, I don't want to say we just slap all the all the, the mental problems on Ellie. No. <laughs> but as part of the PTSD, maybe she's having like these slight, uh, for lack of a better term, schizophrenic visions. Yeah. Where she's she's having these little mental hallucinations. And she has these conversations in quiet moments with Joel a couple times throughout the game. And you, I, I almost would have preferred, not preferred, but I almost would have, I think a better or a different way to go about it would have been instead of those cutscenes back to three years ago, two years ago, those specific ones, if they happened in real time while she's trying to go after Abby. Yeah. You didn't think I was gonna let you do this alone, Joel. La, da, 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 and you have an exchange in that moment with hallucination, Joel. And those are the things that kind of push push the plot through because she kind of loses herself for a minute. Yeah. Um. So that that's all I'll say on on that part. But yeah. Uh. No. I mean, otherwise, uh, a lot of that a lot of that makes sense to me. <laughs> Yeah, it's just uh, again. I was trying to like it's not to say I I don't I wouldn't appreciate someone saying that oh every single narrative aspect of the second game sucks because it doesn't. I think that the whole thing of a small community in Jackson trying to restore whatever peace that they can to the community is actually a fantastic idea and makes sense on so many different levels. Like hey guys, if we bond together sort of build this base where we can search for infected who might be plaguing the area. We can keep this place safe. We can have electricity running. So that part of it I like. It makes perfect sense. But I just feel like in the midst of Joel and Ellie kind of being in that community, you know, through time, their relationship has deteriorated. So it's like they're forced to see each other, but Ellie is not giving Joel any of it. So I, because again, in, in my heart of hearts, Last of Us is always Joel and Ellie. Yes, there's been Tess, there's been Sam and Henry, there's been Tommy, there's been Maria, there's been all these people. But at its core, you always would wonder what's going to happen with these two, you know? So, yeah, that's just, that's my little sales pitch. But um, if you want, let's jump into yours. Okay, so, the with mine, the thing that I toyed with when I was kind of throwing together the little spec thing 
was that I thought it would be interesting to kind of flip the table. And Ellie would still be our primary character at this point. But I put her in sort of a Joel-esque role with another kid. And the kid would like in the in my draft, the kid was was gonna gonna be a, a, a young black boy who reminded her of Sam. Yeah. And so pretty much the the plot was gonna boil down to we learned that he, he I, I was toying with the idea that maybe he turns out to also be immune, and so then that gives some validity to Joel's claim that there were dozens. Yeah. And she's like, well, maybe. Maybe he wasn't lying to me then. Right, yeah. But obviously we know that he was yes. at the time. Yeah. Um, but so basically I was going to have Jackson get sieged. And I just now when I was putting this together, I, I picked out somebody like the, the Seraphites. Um, so some sort of like religious extremist kind of group maybe. Um comes in and they attack Jackson and they just kind of ravage it and then that's what pushes the story out is that Ellie and, and this this new Sam uh, have to escape the carnage that's going on. Yeah, I have I have Dina being a character still. Uh, Joel possibly is a secondary character and what I mean by this is that maybe everybody kind of gets scattered from the destruction of Jackson. Yeah, and so like. Ellie and, and new Sam go off one way. Joel, Joel and Tommy get shoved off a different way. Maybe Dina ends up going off with Ellie and the kid too. Yeah. Um, but I, but either way, so then that's kind of how the stories end up convert, converging back together is because you jump between Ellie and Joel to bring them back together. Right. Yeah. Uh, I do. I did put in here though, that Dina, Dina does get taken and tortured. Like we had speculated was possible. Um, and she gets like she gets killed, and like she could actually die in about the same time frame as Joel dies in this one. Okay. So Dina gets taken, tortured, killed in front of Ellie, um, and then uh, yeah, essentially, I would I would kind of take the scene we had, shift it to the religious extremists, maybe out by a fire. Dina, Dina gets killed. Ellie gets knocked out, um, and maybe Tommy and. I don't know, maybe Tommy and Joel show up and kill, kill that immediate group yeah. to save them. Something happens. Um, I say things play out uh, more like the trailers portrayed where Joel's alive. Ellie is... Um, essentially, Ellie and Joel are still in cahoots to do stuff. Yeah. However, as I've said, I like the concept of the Abby character, so I don't have a problem with her being integrated in. So I've got Abby could even be a character still who runs tangent to Ellie until the end. Maybe the Fireflies and the Seraphites, because Abby was still part of the Fireflies, they may have they may have been at odds as two separate factions yeah. uh, before. But uh, maybe Abby thinks the Seraphites are the ones who killed her dad, or she knows Joel killed her dad, but she doesn't know exactly where he's at. But she all that 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 those details would need to be ironed out. But yeah. um, you could have Abby and Ellie's stories running uh, parallel to each other and never actually crisscrossing until the end. Yeah. Um, I put Joel could potentially still be killed just later on in the game. I. If if we if we trade him for Dina, I don't know that I want to do that. Uh, you could potentially still off Tommy, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I then have Ellie and Abby team up for revenge on the Seraphites. So then the final thing is this uh, new Abby character that Naughty Dog clearly wants us to give a shit about so that they can either spin her off or do something else, um, still gets her moment in the spotlight. But Ellie is also still our primary hero. Joel may or may not still be alive, but then you bring these two characters together, you have them be, form a super team, and then they have to squash this evil that's been running rampant over their lives. Yeah. And again, you still have that certain that those certain degrees of loss. Like obviously, uh, we don't get Ellie and Dina to the to the point of having their little their cute little family out in out on that farmhouse 
Yeah. Um, Abby probably won't won't meet Lev, but then you have. Well, I mean, you probably you could still integrate that, but um, yeah, you get the point. So pretty much make Abby a, a, a tertiary hero who still has these demons, but doesn't like. I, I know some people were like, "Well, Joel saved her life, and then she turns around and kills him." Maybe that. Maybe you just boil it down as simple as that. Everybody's coming together. Abby's in danger of getting killed. Joel saves her, and she recognizes him or whatever, and uh, that makes her go, "Well, I, I guess I, I guess I owe him now." And so they sort of do the whole Wookiee life debt thing from Star Wars, what is where that? where she d- decides I'm not going to kill him now, even though I wanted to, because he just spared, he just saved my life when I was I was about to die. Yeah, and so then you could have those three characters all be alive at the end with various losses. And I think that it would um, have shaped up to be a little bit more epic of a story without um, ruining everybody's lives. <laughs> <laughs> Including the, uh, the fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I certainly like the idea of the, the peaceful community in Jackson getting raided. Especially you could go with the angle of like, you know, they did that because they want their resources, they want their electricity, they want their food and their supplies and whatever they got. So I think it would be a good plot point to integrate that in there, that they get raided. Um, But then, of course, once they get raided, there's literally almost nothing left of that peaceful community. So it's almost like a back to square one type of thing. Which Which is part of where... Oh well, we lost Dina. We lost Tommy. We lost our community. Now we've got to we got to find somewhere else to to reignite or whatever. Endure and survive. Yep. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I like it. I dig it. Um. Yeah. I would just say that maybe losing both Dina and Joel uh would be a little too much. So I mean. You can either pick one of the two or kill one and spare the other. Well, and that's kind of what I was saying. Yeah. I think I I, I, I think that the game we thought we were getting was going to see Dina lo- was going to be yeah, was going to see Dina die. Yeah. Because, like we've said, Ellie and Joel are the core of the thing, and so we thought they were still going to be our our primary uh, pro- protagonists. Yeah. And so that's why I was saying. Uh, you could you could off him later in the game, but I don't think you have to, unless you do it as like he sacrifices himself to save Abby, and that's why she goes, "Oh shit!" Well, I guess I got what I, I guess he saved he spared him or he he sacrificed himself to save me, and it it fulfilled what I was trying to do, and so then she kind of releases the hate, and that's where she and Ellie team up. But that's like the worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. I I I'm not crazy about that. Yeah, rising above the hate. Yeah. yeah okay, Kane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I dig it. I like it. Um, honestly, I feel like anything that is not what they actually gave us would have been a better story. <laughs> so... Yeah. yeah. So, I mean... Yeah, I mean, that would be my pitch. That would be your pitch. Um, anything else? A- anything that you would consider recutting or reframing or re- rebooking? Uh, no, not really. I, th- <laughs> I think we, we've kind of exhausted the stuff at this point. Yeah. I mean, I I know I brought this up to you, but there, there there's even a, a... I don't know if it's still actively going on, but there was a petition going around to have Naughty Dog basically remake Last of Us Part 2. And yeah. it's, it's, I think it, the last time that I heard it was like thirteen or 14,000 signatures. But um, when you crunch the numbers, and I know you brought this up, when you got 4 million people buying a copy of the game and you only got 14,000 signatures, that's, a, that's, that's the small minority that's begging for a remake of the game. And... So, 
honestly, I and mean, you you think about all the resources that they got have to that they have to use and all the expenses that they have to put into it. Um. So I mean, at this point, it is what it is, even though it really wasn't what we were expecting or or wanted for that matter. Uh, at this point, Last of Us Part Two is what it is. Thank you so much for joining us on another edition of BA Select Start. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let us know how you guys would uh, give a sales pitch for Last of Us Part 2 if it was in your hands and it was in early development. Let us know what you think. Once again, on behalf of Dan, the man, and myself, we invite everybody to stay home and stay safe during these hard times because there is an actual pandemic going on in the world as we speak. And... Always remember and never forget, whenever you're in doubt, just turn down the treble and crank up the bass. We'll touch base with you guys next time.